Aloha. My name is Elaine Gallant, and I am your host of Books, a live streaming series with Think Tech Hawaii. In these episodes, we will talk about reading books, writing books, and everything in between. I'm very fortunate tonight to have a very special author. She writes multifaceted World War II Pearl Harbor fiction novels. Her name is Sarah Ackerman, and she is a USA Today bestselling author. Sarah, welcome to Books, Books, Books. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. And we're excited to have you. You are on the big island at Waimea, and I'm on Maui. So, and Think Tech Hawaii is on Oahu. So we're covering the islands kind of the way that you cover the islands in your books, sort of. I have to say that as we're waning on a World War III, this is very, very serious news in our society, in our world right now, your books uh, occur at the waxing of World War II, the things that happened at Pearl Harbor. It's not necessarily the blood or the gore, but it's about the individuals that you spotlight that come into play and have had a big part not only in, well, not a big part, it's sometimes a little part, but they played important parts in the end of World War II in helping people. So I wonder if you might, if we can expand on some of that with each of your novels. Um, for instance, your first novel, Island of Sweet Pies and Soldiers, you have your main character, Violet and um, Ellie. Mm -hmm. No, Ella, I, yeah. Iverson. Ella. Tell us how they played a role in Pearl Harbor. Okay, um, so this story was actually towards the later part of the war. Um, and I was inspired by, I had, well, I had been living in Waimea, but also my grandmother, uh, my grandparents had been in Honoka during the war. Um, and my, my mom was raised there until she was, I think, eight. But um, my main character, they were residents of Honoka. My, um, my grandfather was the principal of the school there during the war. And so um, Violet and her friends actually ended up in my novel, they were, um, they befriended a lot of the Marines that lived at Camp Tarawa. And um, they became close with these Marines and they were kind of like became a support for these Marines as they were far from home. And, um, you know, they didn't know where they were going. They knew that they were training for, uh, you know, battles in the Pacific, but they had didn't, no idea that they were off to Iwo Jima. Um, and so this is a story kind of, a, it's a love story, a story of friendship, and also kind of spotlights, I think, the, uh, the local people of Hawaii and what they went through during the war. I have to say, you had me at Aloha when, with your opening line. I had seen the book on the internet, and, but I didn't purchase it right away. And then I'm shopping through Costco, and I open the book, and your opening line is, Mr. Macadangdang showed up with a truck full of coconuts this morning. And I had to laugh because how, how wonderful is that to the Hawaiian islands? Macadangdang's not an unfamiliar name through these islands. We have Joey Macadang here on Maui. So when I read that line, uh, my, I just went, oh my gosh, what a great opening line. This is going to be a really good story. And it was. I really appreciated that story. The second novel was The Lieutenant's Nurse, another wonderful tale of a woman with a secret past and she has a job to do. Mm -hmm. She has mm -hmm. a job to do. So you want to talk about that one? Yeah. Um, again, this one was inspired by my grandmother who did come over um, before she was a teacher. Um, she came over on the Lurleen and um, and she had kind of met this, she had met this man. And so on the ship, even though she was coming over to, um, my grandfather had sent her a ticket to come. She fell for this guy and, um, but my grandfather was waiting on the, on the dock and he proposed right when she got there. And so she always kind of wondered about this man. Um, and we had always thought about it. And so when I tried to, when I started thinking about book ideas, um, I looked into the Lurleen and I, I discovered some interesting information that I had never learned about in school and how they picked up because they were on their, they were en route to Hawaii 
a couple of days before the attack and they had picked up all these mysterious radio signals. And so that got me thinking. Um, and then I knew that as a woman, um, you know, there weren't a whole lot of roles for women during the war, but nurses were played a really important part of Pearl Harbor. So uh, that's, that's how that one came to be. So I looked at your website and you give a lot of explanation for each of your, so your, your novels. And by the way, that website is fantastic. It has a little something for everybody, the reader, the writer, the, the kitchen chef. I loved your recipes for malasada and all this, but I don't want to digress on, on that because it's just a fun, I want to encourage everyone to go to your website, which is www.ackermanbooks.com. Is that correct? Yes, thank you. Yes, okay. Um, the, other, uh, the other thing about this lieutenant's nurse is you do go into your grandmother's story a little bit and how he, she actually had an affair on the boat and then ended up arriving in Honolulu and your grandfather proposing to her and her accepting. But more importantly, she has a secret. She's come, not your grandmother, but your character has come under an assumed name. Mm -hmm. And so that has to be as well. I thought the story was really great. I really, I really got involved in that one. Thank Red you. sky over Hawaii. My goodness, my goodness. A friend of mine who had read my previous book who was telling me about her her mother her friend's mom in a retirement home in Kona um, that had you know this was the inspiration actually for my story whose parents she was ten her parents had been and taken away um, for a couple years and um, or at least her dad was for a couple years and they were kind of left on their own so that was half the story half the inspiration for that one yeah. And then your, 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 your protagonist is um, Alana, and she ends up not only protecting the children of the German couple, but also a Japanese boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, because, you know, we all heard about the Japanese going into internment camps and, and the military looking for them and, and taking them away. So this was a pretty brave woman, and she, she had a daughter herself, right, that was growing and learning and... Um, no, she had involved the German, the German girls with her. Oh, so she, and with her, Coco, Coco Hitchcock. Coco was the um the two one of the two German girls that she took with her up to the volcano. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I see. So she was she didn't have any kids of her own, but she had just arrived in Hilo. Her dad passed away, but he had you know he had built this this house um in case oh. of an invasion. In you use the location so effectively. I mean, I sorry revisiting that area. You must know it very well. I do. I do. I love the volcano. I've been going there a lot since I was little. My grandparents, uh, actually both sets of grandparents um, were from the Big Island or lived on the Big Island. And so I grew up going there. Um, and then I go there all the time. It's one of my favorite places. So I, it was easy to write about in that respect. Yeah. Amazing, and, and then you have Radar Girls. I haven't read this one yet, but I'm got it on my my list to do. I'm very excited about it because you say that um, all of the girls had to have a crash course in radar codes, were taught complicated calculations, and shown how to guide pilots into blacked out runways or talk them home when they were lost. And these were volunteers, and they were uh, women from all over. And they had to go through this whole process. You want to talk about this novel briefly? Yeah. Um, to start with, they were they were mostly all from Hawaii, um, and they started on Oahu, but then the outer islands. Then they set up stations as well. So this was um, right after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, the men to free up the men for fighting. Um, they recruited all these women, and they had to be, I think, 19 to 34 with no kids. Um, to run the radar stations and radar was brand new at that point. Um, so they, you know, they just had discovered really that it worked on Pearl Harbor and station Opana and that whole story, how we actually saw the Japanese planes coming, but didn't realize what it was. Um, and so these women were top secret. It was top secret. No one even knew about it. If you ask, you know, when I asked, started asking some, a lot of the old, my older family friends, no one had even heard about it. So these women were working around the clock. Um, and like, like you said, they were guiding pilots, they were tracking planes. Um, we did have another 
you know, I think it was in March of 1942, you know, we had another um, attack, although it was, it was botched. They didn't, they didn't succeed, but they did end up dropping two bombs here on Oahu. Okay, I was just looking at the chat room. Um, there are some questions there and I do want to, I would do want to go to them, but I want to mention two things. One, you're, because you are looking at a multifaceted, uh, you're taking a multifaceted look at the war. In other words, each novel looks at it from a different direction and from a different person's perspective, but it's the same war. So some information is, is the same in every novel. And one of those things that came out of it for me was that the United States had a pretty good idea this was about to happen. Mm -hmm. That there could be some information out there. They but did. It, yeah. You know, but yeah. it had not acted on. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, speculation, you know, there's a lot of theories on really to what degree they knew it was going to happen. It, there, and people, people were, or the state of Hawaii, we were having people build bomb shelters even the year before, or the whole year leading up to it, um, air raid shelters. And um, so, yeah, there's, there's been numerous and uh, countless actually books written on that subject. Um, and the more you look into it, the more, you know, you start now, scratching your head. Let's ask a question from the uh, chat room. One of them was, and you might giggle about this. I understand you're a trained acupuncturist. Will we see that in a character someday? Well, um, it's funny because I have a couple unpublished books. So in my unpublished books that I'd written before, um, I do have an acupuncturist character. I have like an herbalist character. Um, so, and I actually have a book that I, um, I proposed to my publisher as a future book that involves, um, you know, it's kind of partly set in Chinatown um, during, actually during the war, uh, but we'll see. I'm not sure yet. That's a good question. Okay, well, Helen, Helen would like to know that. Faith Basher is asking, what, attach, what is your attachment to animals and humans um, since they appear in every one of your novels? And do you have a favorite of these animals in your novels? of the four that we've mentioned already? Um, well, I love animals, obviously. Um, and I'm a big believer, you know, in animals, therapy animals. And that's what, you know, that's how I ended up writing in um, The Lieutenant's Nurse. But also the whole spark, the whole idea for my first novel um, was this lion that the Marines had with them, Roscoe, in Waimea. They had smuggled this lion in. And so that lion became my you know, my idea for the story. And then, um, and I knew the little girl in my story was going to be traumatized uh, by something. And so this lion was kind of almost like a little, it was a therapy for her. And then um, the dog as well in, um, in Red Sky over Hawaii. Um, I think I'm just really interested. In, and I think if, when you start looking more deeply into each individual stories during war, you see like you'll hear about the animals, you know, like if you're reading the battle stories, you don't, but when you hear about people in their individual lives, when I was reading through old accounts, um, my dad's classmates on Pearl Harbor, they always mentioned the dog or the cat, you know, something like that. So I think, right. Added an element of realism as well. Yes, you had horses in another one. And the question that I momentarily lost because I am a senior at this point um, <laughs> was that, at one, it's, uh, you and I had a conversation and you said um, someone was calling your novels a series. Now, I kind of look at them as a collection. How do you see your novels? Yeah, it's definitely a collection. Somebody had said series and then someone else had said collection. And I said, yeah, I like collection better because they are not a series. Um, it is. And they're all, there are Pearl Harbor stories. Uh, I think Radar Girls and Lieutenant's Nurse are more actual Pearl Harbor stories and the other ones are wartime Hawaii stories. But yeah, I think they're all, I like collection. Um, can we see the graphics of um, uh, um, Island of Sweet Pies and Soldiers? 
Okay, there it is. And then uh, the lieutenant's wife, I mean, the yeah. lieutenant's nurse. There you go. And then red sky over Hawaii and radar girls. And then drum roll, please, Sarah, tell us about your newest novel, The Code Breaker's Secret. So The Code Breaker's Secret, the original title was The Last Plane to Honolulu, um, but The Code Breaker's Secret actually, I think, is more telling of what it's about. Um, so if you had read The Lieutenant's Nurse, you're familiar with, you are familiar with The Dungeon, which is um, the building, it's underneath the administration building in Pearl Harbor. And I um, actually just got to go on a tour of that. So that was really amazing. Um, but that's where all the code breaking took place in World War II or in Hawaii during World War II. There was um, Pearl Harbor and Washington, mostly a little bit in the Philippines um, and some in Australia. But so this book is about a female code breaker that comes to Hawaii and she's in the dungeon. Um, and then it's a dual timeline novel. So there's also another story and they're tied together kind of by a pilot. So he's in both timelines and um, they there's a mystery. And the second storyline is set at Mauna Kea Beach Hotel in 1965. And so the two stories kind of converge at the end. Okay, now we can, we can pre-order this novel, but we can't, get our hands on it yet. Is that correct? Correct. It releases on August 2nd. Um, but I do, I'll do some advanced giveaways every, I, you know, I'll do a few giveaways beforehand. So if people are following me on, you know, Instagram, usually or Facebook, then I'll, I'll do a couple giveaways because it's always fun to send right. some out. How can people get your books? Are they on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles? Are they in individual bookshops? How, how do people get their hands on your novels? Um, yeah, they're pretty much anywhere that you can find books, uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, they're on Audible, and um, they are in Kona. I, I mean, I like, to I like to have people buy local, obviously, so I know they have them here at the shop in Kaimaki. I think they have it, some at Native Books, um, Barnes and Noble, on the Big Island, Kona Stories and Kona Bay Books. And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, but yeah, those are the and the local stores that I knew of. Um, and, and anywhere online that sells books pretty much. Will we, will we see more of them in uh, Costco? I hope so. They have my first you two know? Costco. And um, you know, during the pandemic, everything got really weird. Um, so hopefully again in Costco, yeah. I know Walmart also has had them for, a, Walmart has had Radar Girls for a while and I was in there the other day and they still had some. So if you're not near a bookstore, um, Walmart also has some. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. What else are you writing, uh, Sarah? Because a writer never stops. They're always thinking of something ahead. Are you going to remain with, uh, are you going to stick with uh, the Pearl Harbor theme? Or are you going to break out from that? Uh, well, my next book, which I haven't actually announced yet, um, is not Pearl Harbor. It is historical fiction. It is set partly, mostly in Hawaii. And, um, and so, yeah, I think we're veering away from World War II. I think five World War II books is probably enough. However, um, if a good story came up, I would you know, I'd be interested in, in that. I'm not saying, never saying never. Never say never is right. Um, once you've decided on the basic idea of your story and you have your characters in mind, this is for all the writers now because we, we, we've satisfied the readers here. Let's give the, let's give the writer something because I, I, I'm very heavily involved in the writing world as well. Not to your level, but I, I have my own little thing going. Um, how did... Um, Tell us about, once you understand how your story is going to go, what is your research like? How do you begin with that or end well, with that? I think in, at least over time, it's gotten a little easier because I've had a, I have more to draw from um, just in the World War II, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, Pacific arena. Um, but usually I'll, I'll have one or two books that I usually always read. Uh, articles online. I try to talk to people as much as I can. Um, you know, I have a lot of people here to draw from family, friends and um, acquaintances and, that I know of that have maybe 
if not lived through it, maybe their parents have. Um, I usually also watch some old movies to try to get, you know, get a, a visual um, as much as I can. I was just wondering if the events of today will have any influence because it's, you know, it's live now. Everything's are, things are live now, even though you're, you're getting away from the Pearl Harbor stories. Yeah, you know, um, I'm not sure. I think, I think it's just, it, it just will depend with the book as what I'm writing. Yeah, yeah. But I do, um, you know, I don't go to too much in depth in the like beforehand, because I know also as I'm writing it, that informs what I'm going to need to know. So I'll, I'll kind of have my baseline what, I'll, what I'm learning. And then as I go, I, I end up having to do a fair amount of research as well. Like code breaking. I had to learn a lot about code breaking. Yes, and I would to explain it. Um, and that was really challenging. I think that may have been the hardest. I bet. Speaking of code breaking, how did you get into that bunker? <laughs> um, somebody that had read my books actually works on Pearl Harbor. And he um, he's in this a similar field but you, with computers um as the code breakers and so he asked me if i had been there and i said no and then there was a tour happening just so happened and so i got to tag along yeah it was it was timing amazing. yeah yeah timing is exactly right so we're, we're just about out of time is there anything that you would like to tell us that um, about your novels? Like, do you have a favorite one of the ones you've written? Uh, you know, is one. there a particular character that you assimilate to or you especially appreciate it because it reminded you of someone in your life, like your grandmother, you know, your, or your mom, your mother? Well, uh, Daisy, the main character in this uh, Radar Girls was, even though my mom, you know, she wasn't in the women's air raid defense, um, just my mom did grow up in Wailua and she was a little, you know, just running around out there barefoot kid after she had left the big island. Um, so that was somewhat inspired by my mom. All my characters, there's a little piece of, you know, either family or friends in my characters, but it's usually a mix. It's not usually just the entire, like, modeled completely after someone the authenticity is what counts right when, when you're writing yeah definitely so what's on your bedside table what are you reading well I'm reading a book that I'm writing um, for an author friend of mine and it's called Angels of the Resistance by Noelle Salazar she wrote The Flight Girls and it's really good it's really, really good. People are gonna definitely wanna pick that one up. It releases in November. Um, so I'm reading that right now. Uh, let's see, what else am I reading? Um, I'm listening to, I just I started listening to Nugget. It's a Pearl Harbor story about a pilot um, and it's fascinating. Yeah, it's about a- um, I haven't heard it. I just started it. I just started it and it's fascinating. It's very detailed. Clearly, um, you know, the author was in the military and knows his stuff about um, aviation and, and the war. It's really good. It's called, I'm pretty sure it's called just Nugget. Nugget. Oh my yeah. goodness. We'll have to look. It's well. good. But yeah. I want to find everyone to look up all five of your novels and you can find them on Amazon and various locations. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. It's such, it was so lovely meeting you and talking about your novels, and I wish you such, such success. I really do. Um, yeah, sure. In closing, I would, yes, I would like to thank the technicians and the staff of Think Tech Hawaii. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, the producer, our underwriters, all the viewers that watch this show. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very appreciative, and um, I think the shows have, all the shows have great value. Um, my novels also can be found on Amazon. I'll just put that little plug out there. Um, is there any website, Sarah, you want to mention besides your www.ackermanbooks.com? Nope. Facebook? I mean, I'm mostly, I think I'm most active on Instagram at Sarah Ackerman Books. Yeah, that's my, okay. the one I, I hope everyone will follow. Again, much success. Good Thank night, you. everyone.
sleep well. Good night. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.